Hi, this is Dan May from Ramsack and this is part of a series of uh, video blogs looking at the applications in Microsoft Office 365 uh, that perhaps you're not quite so familiar with as our traditional Word, Excel and PowerPoint Office documents. And in today's blog we're going to look at Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams is uh, designed for organisations that want to perhaps rely a bit less on traditional email as a form of communication and really want to increase collaboration uh, amongst their organisation. So it's designed to bring uh, organisation uh, groups together uh, to work collaboratively on files with video calls with uh, with shared documents and to have a, a more sort of informal instant messenger WhatsApp type chat experience for groups of people that need to collaborate on a project or a piece of work or a particular work stream. When uh, going through this um, application um, you'll see that actually Teams is a uh, it's effectively a single pane of glass that brings together a number of different Microsoft Office 365 applications. And rather than going into uh, detail of each individual application that we're going to look at today, I'll just refer you back to our uh, Ramsack blog at uh, www.ramsack.com uh, because there's a whole load of vlogs on there uh, looking at the individual applications such as um, Planner and uh, OneDrive and OneNote for example all of which you're going to see in this brief demonstration of Teams uh, but today I'm going to focus on Teams itself and um, so let's get started so first of all um, if I hover over the Teams button here, you'll see that uh, there's a whole load of Teams listed that I'm a part of. So these are all the Teams that I'm a part of and that I've added to my favourites so that I see them regularly. But it's really easy for anybody to join or create a team on the fly. So we're going to start off just by creating a new team, which we do by hovering to this button at the bottom that says Join or Create a Team. If I click on that, then um, I can create a team here. Or I can join any organizational teams that um, are open that I've not currently joined. But for, for now, um, I'm going to create a team. So I click on that button there. I'll give it a name. I'm just going to call this example team. Um, and I decide at this stage uh, what my privacy settings are going to be. And it's really straightforward. There are two options. A private team means that I own it and I decide who gets to join. And a public team means that anybody in my organization can join. So for now, I'm going to select private. Click on next. It's going to very quickly create the team. And now I need to add team members. So I'm just going to add uh, Louise and Simon who work with me uh, on my team. I'll click add. And I can decide if uh, I want them to also be owners of this group, which would give them those same rights to be able to change the privacy settings and allow new people into the group. But for now, I'll just leave them both as members. I click on close and that's it. There is my example team created. Now, within Teams, uh, it's possible to break a team down into a number of channels. So if I look at the example team here, I can see that it's created a general tab. In good... Um, uh, Blue Peter Styley. I'm going to go to an example that I created earlier. So here is a test team and if I expand that team out you'll see that I've got the general channel that was created uh, and then I've created these various other channels here. So channels are a way of breaking down a team into more uh, specific areas of focus. So if I'm a member of a team I can see all of the channels within it, so it isn't a privacy setting where you'd put some people in some channels and not in others, but rather it's there to ensure that you can segment conversation into different categories so that people can find what they're looking for easily. So just as an example, we create a team for every client that we work with because we recognize that we have colleagues in our support department, our technical top department, our project team, etc., uh, who all interact with the client. So we create a client team. And then within that client team, we create an individual channel for every project that we might be working on. So we might have an Office 365 migration channel. We might have a desktop infrastructure upgrade channel. We might have a uh, an office move channel for example and then it's easy for the technical consultants to see which uh, channel they want to go to to find information relating specifically to the piece of work that they're working on. 
So if you look next to the test team, you'll see there's these three dots. If I click on that, it gives me some more options. This is where I can favorite or unfavorite a team so that it always appears in my uh, navigation bar. I can manage a team, which allows me to change the privacy settings. Here is how I add a new channel. So I'll just click on add channel and I could call it uh, project E um, and there it is. Um, so, but I'll just go back to, to those options. Um, I can add new team members. I can leave the team myself. I can edit the team settings, the team name, or I can get a hyperlink so that I can easily send somebody a, a hyperlink and an email to ensure that they're visiting uh, the team when I want them to. So, um, so these, uh, these channels all look pretty similar when you go into them. So I'm just going to go into the, the general tab. And the first thing you'll see is this sort of chat window. Now, all of this chat window and the meeting functionality that I'm about to show you are based on Skype for Business technology. And again, as I said at the beginning of this uh, blog, I'm not going to go into Skype for Business in huge detail because there is a separate post uh, on ramsack.com to help explain a little bit more about Skype for Business. Um, but I suppose the main difference between using this as your conversation window as opposed to using a, a, a regular Skype for Business instant messenger conversation is that um, by default with Skype for Business, really once you've left a conversation, it's pretty much gone. I mean, it is actually there in your history, but to all intents and purposes, it's not on view anymore. And generally speaking, Skype for Business conversations tend to happen you know, sort of on the fly between a couple of people. Whereas this, I think of this as more as, as a WhatsApp group, really. It enables uh, a history to build uh, within the channel of all the conversation and all the activity that's gone on. So if I want to go back to it at any point, I can go and see what the activity was. I can use the search bar at the top to look for a particular key phrase so that I can find perhaps something that we were discussing a few weeks ago. And because Teams is designed for collaboration, it means everybody that is entered into this team can see the history of the conversation as well. So I can start a conversation down here. It says here, start a new conversation or type at to mention somebody. So I can say, hi, everyone. Um, this is a message. And then I might want to make sure that somebody in particular on this team sees an action for them. So if I use the at symbol and just start typing, I can say, at Lawrence, can you make sure that you see this? And um, because I've um, tagged Lawrence by name, he will get an alert in the same way that you'd get an alert if you had a new email in Outlook. Uh, Lawrence will get an alert or even an email to his inbox if that's how he set his settings up to let him know that he's been tagged in a conversation. If I want to down here, I can, um, I can attach a file. I can add an emoji, which you know might be considered important, um, and I can even add little sort of memes and stickers if uh, if you're so inclined. I'm typically not. Um, so there's a, a little instant chat, and I can send that. Uh, and again, everybody in the team can see can see this conversation. Um, where this, I think, then becomes really powerful is um, I can now create an on-the-fly meeting using this little camera icon at the bottom. So if I'm just going to click on that, I can uh, give this meeting a subject. Uh, it's using my webcam, so now you get to see me recording this to you, which is a little unusual. Uh, so I can say, this is a test meeting. Um, I can turn my camera on or off. I can choose which camera I want to use, perhaps if I'm using a front or rear facing camera. And I can either schedule this meeting to happen at some point in the future, or I can click meet now to make the meeting happen right away. So uh, this meeting is going to start happening. I'm in it, and it immediately suggests everybody that's in this team um, that I might want to, to quickly add in. So I could, uh, I could add Simon. I could add as many of these people as I like. With Skype for Business, you can have numerous, numerous people involved. Um, so there comes Simon, and I'm just going to uh, end that call uh, so that uh, so that that doesn't um, uh, come into the the vlog. Uh, the other great thing in this tool is um, within the call, uh, within the team settings, one of the things that's really useful is if I just click on uh, the little three dots here. Um, I have an option to record the call. So I can start recording. Um, that is a really useful function because if this was a team meeting or a team briefing, I can start the recording 
at the end of the meeting that recording will automatically upload into the team so that those people that weren't available perhaps they're on leave or they were on a client project they get to go back and see the uh, the full recording of the uh, of the team meeting other things I can do in this uh, in this window here if I click on this share tray uh, I have the option to share either my desktop a particular window on my desktop that I've got open or an individual sort of PowerPoint presentation. So now you can see that this could be used to perhaps run team briefings. I've seen organizations use this for sort of you know, weekly sales huddles where staff are perhaps working from home or working on client sites or you're a multi-site organization. So again, there's lots of information on how to do that in our Skype for Business blog. Uh, so I'll leave you to have a look at that separately. But you get the idea from this conversation window, I have uh, started a, a meeting I've put it into a recording mode so that colleagues can see that in the future. Um, and I, I perhaps shared documents. And, and again, that will all be included within the presentation as well. So I'm just going to end that conversation. Uh, so I can see Simon's just replied to the meeting that I invited him to and uh, mentioned that the sound was okay. So brilliant, good for him. So there's our conversations. Um, the other thing we can do in Teams is we can start to create document libraries and this is specific to each channel that you're working in. So remember the channel being that kind of the subgroup within the team. So if I go into files, I can start uploading documents. I can create new documents on the fly. Now what's really good in Office 365 is these documents can all be worked on simultaneously. So if I click on this health check document um, and open it, uh, and if I select when I open it, uh, to it online, um, or to do it within Teams itself, then this means it's uh, entirely possible for multiple people to work on the same document at the same time. So I could be doing this within my meeting that I previously set up, or we could just have this as an open document. So for example, an Excel spreadsheet that multiple people uh, on the team all need to have access to, they can all um, open the document at the same time. You can see who's editing what. I could start a conversation window at the side if I wanted to. So um, I could have a little text-based chat to whoever else is online and in this document. So I could say, please, uh, can everyone look at the info on page three? Or again, I could decide, actually, I don't want to do this via text. I want to just turn this into a quick meet now video call. So all of the options are there for us to have a document storage specific to this team that everybody in the team has access to and that if needs be multiple people can collaborate on all at the same time. So you can see this is a really powerful collaboration tool. I'm just going to close that. I can then create all kinds of other tabs alongside Teams. So if I click on add a tab there are all kinds of applications that I can add in. So you'll see your familiar documents, so I could have an Excel document um, or a Word document, for example, actually permanently open as its own tab within the team. If you're using Power BI for business information reporting, you can have that live integrated into your team. If you use Planner, which is a brilliant online planning tool, and again, there's a separate vlog about Planner on the uh, Ramsack website, uh, then that can all be integrated. So instead of having to open separate Microsoft applications to access information you have in, in across the 365 family, you can actually, in Teams, bring it all into one place just by adding new tabs. And it's not just 365 applications. There's a whole load of third-party add-ins uh, that come into there. So if you use Ignite for document storage, for example, uh, then there's no reason you can't include that. There's a whole load of ready-built applications. Um, you can have web pages that are opening live. So just click on a web link. Um, so if you've got team websites that you access all the time, that can all start to build in these tabs. So just as an example, in this particular test tab, I've added meeting notes. That's using Microsoft OneNote. But instead of having to go into OneNote separately, it's all just going to be here within my teams. Again, there's a separate vlog on OneNote that explains how that works in more detail. And my test team tab here is actually a Microsoft Planner. So again, uh, if you're using Planner and a as I say, there is a, a separate vlog that help, shows you how to use this as a as a planning tool, and that's all there within your um, within your team environment. So, uh, in a nutshell, that covers most things. I can see at the side here, I've been tagged in new activity, so I'm getting alerts in the same way that I would in my inbox. So I can see what's going on. There's a there's a new message for me here in general, and um, so I can see that. Um, 
that uh, yep, Lawrence has replied to the message that I sent earlier on, so that comes in. And just one other little tip that I think is really useful is within each channel, you can also create an email address. So if I just click on the more options here and I say get email address, that will create a specific email address for test team uh, project A. Um, I can copy that email address, share that with colleagues, and actually what we do internally is we just set up a rule so we make it something nice and memorable like, you know, test team project A at, uh, at SharePoint, uh, at team, sorry. Um, and uh, then if we're running a project, any email communication to the client, no matter who on the project team is, is sending that email communication, we copy in the team's email address and it automatically stores a copy of that email within the team's window. So again, just bringing Outlook into the picture now, we start to build up a really um, uh, all-encompassing set of data regarding the project or the workflow that we're working on. So that's Teams. It's downloadable from your Office 365 apps portal. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to get in touch either via our website at www.ramsac.com or feel free to give us a call on 01483 412 040 and be sure to visit our blog to see the other video uh, vlogs uh, around various Office 365 applications that you might find useful. Many thanks. Bye-bye.